Right now we're on route to interview Gail Gand. She is a celebrity pastry chef and she owns a restaurant called True in Chicago. Hi. Nice to meet you. No, it's okay. Oh, wow. Your kitchen is so pretty. I am particularly was really excited to meet you. I saw you a few times on Food Network and your face just looks so happy and we just wanted to hear about your story and the events leading up to your life today. You know, if someone had said to my parents that even at age 20, what do you think Gail's gonna be? It, it wouldn't have been totally clear. You know, people go like, tell me what your path was so I can do it too. And I'm like, no, 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 don't do it. Don't do it how I did it. But, but if I had done it any other way, I wouldn't be where I am. When I'm around 10 and 11 years old, I start making jewelry and like stringing beads. Mm -hmm. And then in high school, I take silver and goldsmithing classes at school. I take every class they've got. They have no more, so now what do you do? So I find a lady locally who's a silversmith and take classes with her and negotiate with the high school to get extra credit. So that's sort of the start of me being this sort of self-managed person who finds a path they like, work the system, so that I get to do it more and I get credit for it. And I go to art school to get my degree. After three years, I just can't take it. And I'm not loving it and I'm not feeling good. But what I do love is I love my waitressing job <laughs> after school. I loved how someone could come in in a bad mood and I could turn that around. Mm -hmm. You know, I could fix it. Mm -hmm. I could fix it for a moment. I loved everything about it. And one day, one of the line cooks didn't show up at work. And they looked at me and they said, Gail, can you cook? And I said, no, I can't cook. You know, I'm <laughs> from the North Shore of Chicago. You know, we make reservations. And they threw an apron at me and they said, they, you can cook now. Get in the kitchen. And I, was, I always get choked up when I talk about this. I was completely terrified for like four seconds. And I go in the kitchen and I start to kind of, you know, it's like tinkering on the piano. You've never played in your life and suddenly you have to play a concerto because the guy who was on next didn't show up looked at the mushrooms and looked at the red peppers and saw what I had, these alive ingredients that I had to work with. I had this weird sensation as if, like this sense of calm came over me, as if I had found my home. And it was this familiar place and feeling that I had never been before. And I can't explain why it was like, it's like speaking a language that you didn't know you knew. Like maybe you spoke it as a kid and then forgot or something, but I, I don't know why I felt so comfortable there, but I did, and it, it felt like a calling almost. How, what was the first, I guess, your doorway to getting into the kitchen? Well, I dropped out of college for a year. I went to Europe for a bit of it. Um, I went to France, and I slept in my car and spent all my money on eating in three-star restaurants all over France. I'd show up for my reservation at 7.30 in the morning and say, hi, I'm here for my lunch reservation at noon, and they'd be like, well, uh, you're a bit early for your reservation. And I'd say, I was just wondering if maybe I could spend the morning in the kitchen. And they'd slam the door and go away and come back, and they're like, uh, we talked to the chef, and they said that you can just, if you, if you can sit in the corner, yeah, and stay out of the way, and not, you know, talk. You, I'm like, that's what I would love to do. And what you do is after like the first half hour, find the guy in the kitchen who's doing the most menial tasks and you walk over to him and go, you know what, I bet, I bet you have better things to do than just peel that bag of potatoes. Why don't you let me do that? And like slowly, they'd let you handle the food and they'd let you in the kitchen and then it becomes sort of this funny like, they want to show you their secrets. Like a guy would come over and say, like, come here, I want to show you something. And he was <laughs> stuffing truffle slices under the skin of a chicken. And by the end of the morning, then you sit down for lunch. You know everybody. Everybody loves you because you've done their grunt work for them. All kinds of extra stuff come to the table and you learn a ton. You know, if you're smart, you can figure out where to get the knowledge that you need for whatever it is you want to try to do. Did you ever have a feeling of maybe feeling inadequate for this when you first got in? I did. My old chef who I had worked part-time with called and he has a pastry position, he needs filling. I'd never really been a pastry chef, but he's like, can't you just come and cover for me for six months? And I thought, you know, are you the person that answers back and says, sure, yeah, okay, let's do this. Or are you someone who sort of, you know, 
throws obstacles in the way and says, well, I'm not quite ready, and I really wanted to have done this first, and... Mm -hmm. I definitely is have. That, is I that like, you? I, not with everything, but with some things, I'm like, I feel like I need to do something in order to feel qualified for yeah. it. Like, Here, Here's what you need to do. You need to lie and say you're qualified, and then when you get there, you will be. Yeah. <laughs> and my example of that, you know, my, this chef says to me one morning, do you know how to make croissants? And the, the right answer to everything in a kitchen is yes, chef. Whether, whether the real answer is no, be it, you always say yes, chef. If they say like, is your work done? Yes, chef. Do you need something to do? Yeah. Just say yes to the chef, right? <laughs> so what do I do after work? I go home that night. I make seven different batches of croissants from seven different books. I stay up all night and teach <laughs> myself how to do it. And when I come to work the next day and he says about those croissants, you know how to make those? When I say yes, I'm not lying because now I do because I've prepared. And you know that might just you might just need to put yourself in some of those positions a couple times to learn that about yourselves. What what can you do and what really can't you do? And I remember when we first met Julia Child, she's like, so you know, tell me your story. Where would you go to school? And um, I said, well, you know, I'm mostly self-taught. She said, oh, darling, never say you're self-taught. Always say you learned in the field. <laughs> so the first thing was sort of to learn how to, you know, glorify your experience a little bit. <laughs> so, you know, mine is this sort of like collage of experiences. You know, if you think about like, should I go live in France for a year or not? You know, just do it, just do stuff. You know, as long as you're safe, just get as many opportunities as you can and meet as many people as you can and say yes as much as you can and, and that will help that thing find you. It's trying to find you right now. It's looking for you. But, you know, you've got to be out there for it to find you. So I think just that. Awesome. And call me in five years and tell me what it was. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Most definitely. Just say yes. I love that. I say love yes. That. Yes, chef. <laughs> yeah. Stop waiting for something to happen to you and go make it happen for you. Exactly. Doing a tour of restaurants in France. Oh, like, who gets so that bowl? That takes a lot of courage. Bye. Take care, girl. Hey, I'm Lindsay. Thanks for watching. Make sure to check out some of our other videos and subscribe. Bye.